Hi, welcome to Home Farm. Today we're going to be telling you how we're going to prepare for our next power outage. So to just give you an idea of who we are and where we are, we are Kirsten and Mars and we live in a farmhouse in rural countryside in the UK and uh, we don't af often have power failures, no. do we? It happens like maybe once every three years and the last time it happened was major. The time before that, it only went off for about three hours. Uh -huh. So it really didn't disturb us too much. But the last time we had one, it was um, last month, which was in December 2021. And there was a big storm that came through and it knocked out the power for us for days. Yeah. And uh, further north in the UK, it knocked out the power for households for a week I think or it was weeks. about 11 days in the end for some people. It was a long mm -hmm. time. That's a really, really long time to not have any, any electricity. It really kind of affected us quite a lot this time and it really made us think, okay, so maybe we need to be a little mm -hmm. bit better prepared for power failures. Given that our power supply is actually quite reliable a lot of the time, I think that we were a little bit un underprepared when Storm R1 actually did affect us. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, unlike people maybe in the United States that do live on the East Coast where they get a lot of hurricanes coming through where they are a lot more prepared. Yeah. Purely by but you know, having a regular power source in the UK, it's one thing that we've not really had to think about. No. Uh, and it's just, it's amazing how when that happens to you, you just realize that there are certain things that go missing. It's like, you know, your, your mobile phone starts to uh, run out battery. of the battery quite quickly. And you think, yeah. oh my goodness, how am I going to recharge that? If I need to make an emergency phone call, the heating goes off. There's just a lot of stuff that you don't take into account. That actually got us thinking. And we've put together a little bit of list of, of certain things that we think will just help us be better prepared the next time a storm or something causes the next power failure. So when the power went off for us, um, it was very sudden and unexpected. Um, and it was not something that was planned. We weren't given any warning. Um, so, and as Mars said, it was because of storm yeah. damage. So for us, it went off literally as we were about to go to bed, all the lights went out. And so we kind of just kind of muddled our way through <laughs> thinking, okay, let's just get, we're in, we're literally in the process of going to bed. So let's just go to bed, yeah. wake up and hopefully the power will be on in the morning. And that wasn't the case, it wasn't on. Yeah. So the very first thing you do when you wake up, for most people <laughs> we do is we just check our phones. And I said to Mars, oh, my battery's going really quickly. So that was the first uh -huh. thing that we were like, okay, how do we deal with this? We've got daylight, so that was good. Mm -hmm. We could see, <laughs> we didn't need to turn the lights on. So because yeah. we don't have a landline, we really rely on our, our mobiles a lot. To make sure that our phones stay charged the next time we do have a power failure, we're gonna be using a power bank from a company called Goal Zero. What's really cool about this product is that it will allow you to recharge your phone up to three times. So what we're gonna do is charge it up fully and just leave it waiting for an emergency. Uh, and then if anything does go wrong, we can connect our phones directly to it. I think what's really cool about Goal Zero is that, for this particular product anyway, is that you can get a little solar charger for it. An add-on. An add-on, so basically you can go outside if you have got sunshine around and allow it to recharge that way so that you've constantly got a source to keep your phones recharged. Which we're also gonna get, we're gonna try and get the solar panel. We're definitely gonna try and get one of those. It's also really handy in the actual USB section itself if you've got two mobile phones like, like we're gonna have, you can actually charge two at the same time because it's got two slots for USBs. And then the other thing that was really cool about it, which it says on here, is that it's got a little torch light it does. Um, next to it. Uh -huh. um, so that's really cool. And then it's also um, dustproof and waterproof. Mm -hmm. um, so you can power you through any adventure, rain or shine, which is really cool actually, because then, yeah. you know, especially if you're in an area where you get flooded or you're dealing with floods, um, and the, you know, obviously once you get flooded, then you've got you know, electricity issues as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just really nice to know that once you've charged this up, you can put it into your, what we're gonna yeah. actually have is we're gonna have a plastic container box um, in our garage and we're just gonna have kind of all of our emergency stuff in there. So we're gonna have this, we're gonna have a torch, we're gonna yeah, have all those all kind of stuff. things and they're gonna be ready to go. So you want them to be charged and every time you use them or go through a power um, outage, you wanna recharge them and then put them all back nicely so that they're ready to go next time. Uh -huh. So it's really nice to know that this is always going to be ready to go. Definitely. Then the next thing was basically you want to just stay clean. So brushing your teeth, you just use bottled water. Hopefully yeah. you'll have some bottled water uh, to hand. And then you, well, we couldn't have a shower because it hadn't reheated our hot water. So unless we wanted a freezing cold shower. Mm. So it was just a question of getting, trying to get as clean as possible. Yeah. So we used wet wipes. Um, then I personally really dislike disposable wet mm. wipes and they're absolutely horrible for the environment. However, these ones are biodegradable, they're compostable. Um, they're 
is no pla they're plastic free um, they're really natural and I highly recommend these mm. I've been using them for a couple of years now on and off whenever we've had these kind of emergency situations or when we've been camping yeah. or kind of outdoor situations and they have been really really good like they it. are so nice and um, they work really well they're perfume free no nasty chemicals and I like the fact that I can just throw them onto the compost heap as well afterwards mm -hmm. um, so I really recommend having a nice kind of eco-friendly packet of wet wipes to hand. So then luckily for us, even though our central heating wasn't working because obviously we had no power, um, we do have wood burning stoves. So we are really fortunate Definitely. that we were able to get the wood burning stoves going in the morning as soon as possible. Um, I really recommend always having a packet of matches because <laughs> you know that those gas clicky thingies, uh, like you know, you know that the one time you really need it to work, it's not gonna be working. So I just recommend just having having a stash of normal matches. You can't go wrong with matches, really simple. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong with these unless they get wet. Mm. Um, and they, you, know, we, you can get quite, you can get like a box of like a hundred of these for yeah, literally hard, yeah, hardly anything. It's so cheap. And then you just stash them away and you've always got them. They're also good, not just to light your fires, but also don't forget that your oven um, mm. for our um, gas rings, when you, you know, click the thing and it yeah, ignites. Yeah, it won't start because there's no electricity. It's not gonna start. <laughs> So you have to light your gas rings with a match as well. And if you have got wood burning stones and you're lucky enough to have those, always ensure that you've got a little bit of dry wood. Uh, yeah. Or you can go down the coffee log route, uh, which, you know, just having something to make sure that you can put it into the fire and get it up and running. Yeah. Uh, if you're enjoying this video so far and you're enjoying our tips, uh, please uh, support us by hitting that subscribe button below and giving us a thumbs up because it really does help us out. Please, guys. Next up, we've just got the coolest product I think <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the BioLite. A camp stove complete cook kit. So it's this crazy. is your complete cooking solution in terms of having to uh, heat water to do all that kind of. Stuff. I mean, that's the first thing that we realize is you know your kettle doesn't work, so you need something to be able to actually heat your water. You've also got this that can actually allow you to cook, and not only does it do all of that, it also charges your phones. <laughs> Sounds really it's crazy. the coolest product I think I've seen in a long, long time. So basically you get the stove and then you put your own wood chips into a, a cylinder that burns. Apart from what's really clever about this is that yeah. it burns the wood without creating smoke. smoke yeah. um, so that's really nice. You're not going to get smoked out. And then it's got a charger um, on the side and the wood generates electricity so the more you're burning the more electricity you're creating it sounds it's awesome. totally wild yeah um so you're generating electricity and then you're, it stores that power into like a, a battery bank basically mm -hmm. so that you can then plug in to that to take the electricity out of it it's very crazy <laughs> It's very well. I think if you're a camper, maybe that you think this is normal. But for us, I've, I've, we're yeah. not campers, so we this is really it's far out awesome. there. Um, it's got a portable grill uh, for wood burning. Do um, so you get a wood burning flavor? That's nice. You can fit up to four burgers on top of that grill, so mm -hmm. that's a quite a decent space. Enough, certainly enough for two people to grill some stuff up. Yeah. And then it's got a kettle pot you with can, a plunger, so you can. <laughs> You're really roughing it up when you don't have <laughs> electricity. You know, filter coffee. The kettle uh, boils one liter of water in four and a half minutes. Which is awesome. Which is really impressive. Um, and the elongated pot of the kettle bit basically doubles as a cooking um, thing. So you could maybe put like soup or something in there as well to warm some stuff up. Then it comes with, as Mar said, the coffee press, which I think is, <laughs> apart from the battery side, the coffee press is probably- I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bonus. Well, I think a lot of people are coffee addicts, right? Definitely. So if you're, if you're one of those people that have to have a cup of coffee in the morning, to know that even in a power outage, you can still have your filter yeah. coffee, it's Pretty, pretty, cool. pretty snazzy. <laughs> and then it comes with a USB flex light as well. So kind of like a, presumably yeah. like a reading light uh -huh. or something like that. But we'll open it up and uh, have a look at it. But it sounds really impressive. So. Wow, this is so awesome. It's even cooler than I thought it was. This is not gas operated, which actually makes this quite unusual. What's really awesome is that it just takes twigs uh, or, or dry little branches, not, not anything too heavy or dense. Uh, you basically just put them in here, start the fire, uh, let it activate. It says on the instructions that you then push this little button on the front, little power button. That then activates some sort of fan that allows the whole thing to come to temperature. So 
this we are just doing this as a, as a quick kind of overview video right now uh, what we really want to do in a couple of months time before it gets into the summer is that we actually want to review this by itself because I really think that this is one of the coolest products that we have seen in a long time the way we've got it set up right now is in order to use it with the actual coffee or tea or actually boiling hot water the actual container itself is massive it's one and a half liters and I've got to say it's just so cleverly designed with the way the plunger actually just goes in there uh, we've also just attached the light which you can or you know you don't necessarily have to use obviously if it's dark it's something that's just convenient but you can just take it out really easily and then that's where this little USB cable goes in to actually charge your phone uh, it also comes with a fire starters and then this is the guy that actually allows you to cook stuff with uh, this just attaches onto the top there once the fire is going obviously you keep that close to allow the heat to build up uh, and then basically the heat just transmits all the way through the grill where you can actually cook your food. So there's no way that we're waiting for the next power fit to actually put us into action. When the weather clears, we're going to go out into the garden, uh, make a separate video, even if it is just to make a cup of coffee. We're not going to be camping, but it'll give you a good idea of what it can do. So if you want to see it working, subscribe now so that you don't miss that video. So the next thing is that going to be that we've used our BioLite camp stove complete cook kit to <laughs> make some water and to yeah. get Miles his uh, precious his coffee. coffee. Or your tea. Uh, then we've made some hot water and where is that hot water going to go obviously you don't want to you do want to kind of save you know, anything like anything hot at that point is really going to be kind of precious so you want to save as much as those kind of things as possible so you can use them later on in the day yeah. so obviously um, when, last year we got our thermos out and we tried to fill that up and I think our, our thermos was about 20 years old yeah. and <laughs> kept it warm for about 20 minutes <laughs> and then it uh, kind of dissipated so we have got the now the stanley uh, thermos mm -hmm. this is pretty this is serious stuff again <laughs> this is pretty durable this is not a joke so the uh, handle is kind of magnetized and flat packs mm. like that then you can kind of pull it out it looks really cool um this is the classic bottle extra large uh, 1.9 liters and it's going to apparently keep the hot water hot in here for 45 hours. Yeah, crazy. 45 hours. That's awesome. I mean, we needed that long. But I mean, even <laughs> I so, just, just, just to keep then. you through a day, I mean, just, it's, you know, you, you heat the water up in the morning. Yeah. You know, this will make, I mean, it's a pretty substantial vessel. So I can get how many cups of tea out of 1.9 litres? Yeah. I mean, most of my cups of tea are like 400 millilitres. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a number of cups of tea that Definitely. I can get out of it. Um, keeps it cold for two days so obviously we're kind of thinking about a situation where we're without power mm. when it's cold um, but you obviously could have power outages yeah. when it's really hot during heat wave as well and apparently it keeps um, the if you have ice in here for your drinks it's going to keep the ice iced for eight yeah, days it's quite a claim but that's what they say and it says Stanley has survived a minus 70 degree wind chill 4,000 feet drops wow. somebody's dropped this from 4,000 feet speeding bullets <laughs> <laughs> i think if we're having to deal with speeding bullets uh -huh. we've got bigger problems than just a power outage <laughs> <laughs> and a category five hurricanes brilliant and then it just says built for life ah it's a serious product that is not a joke but that in all seriousness though if you're in america or somewhere where you are mm -hmm. on a hurricane belt this thing sounds like it's indestructible yeah. so i would highly recommend checking this out it's um got obviously a cup um built mm -hmm. in which is pretty standard and then it just has the typical kind of lid at Lid the top yeah. um but this is really good so i'm really looking forward to using this and having a nice warm cup of tea mm -hmm. uh, while you drink your coffee mm -hmm. Then we've got the little vacuum food jar, which is really awesome for keeping food warm. Uh, ideal for soups or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Uh, it'll keep them warm for up to seven hours. So again, once you've warmed them up potentially on your camp stove, uh, you can put it in here and it will stay warm for seven hours. You don't have the hassle of constantly having to reheat stuff. You can heat it, put it in here and enjoy it. Yeah, it comes with a little spork and um, it's the same um, design and range as the, yeah. the flask so it's also <laughs> bulletproof and etc <laughs> etc et so uh, but dishwasher safe leak proof yeah. and packable mm -hmm. 
So then another thing to think about is just how you're going to pass the time because so much of our entertainment mm -hmm. nowadays comes through things that are um, electrically powered. So whether it's the TV or our telephones or our laptops, etc. And even though we are, we do have these battery packs now to yeah. be able to charge our phones, we're going to be really, really limited on how much we're going to be using them because mm -hmm. we're really going to want to preserve the battery as much as possible. So we're not just going to be sitting yeah, and reading or listening to podcasts and stuff because it's just going to drain the battery too quickly. So just think about um, entertaining yourself, whether it's just doing some exercise during the day, whether mm. it's um, getting out into the garden. If the weather's rubbish, then just thinking about things like Scrabble, reading, um, reading a book, catching up on some you know magazines, um, doing some puzzle books. We got Scrabble out um, <laughs> and we'd had a couple of games of Scrabble because it was really, really cold and miserable things outside. Like chess, Monopoly, whatever. I mean, anything, any board games anything. really just that helps pass the time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it's just one of those things that kind of at, the, at that exact moment you kind of forget and then you kind of end up standing mm. in the kitchen twiddling your thumbs kind of waiting for the power to come back on and that just really <laughs> it just increased my anxiety so much yeah. so just distracting ourselves was I thought really beneficial mm -hmm. and just passing the time and doing something else was was really good yeah and the one thing I would say for entertainment that was really good to have on hand is just a pack of cards, mm -hmm. really simple. And I think that that was a really good thing for us to just have because the one thing you want to think about is entertainment in the evening, especially yeah. for us at that moment, it was getting dark here at like 4 p.m. Mm. So four in the afternoon until the next morning, eight o'clock, we were in complete and utter darkness. And so reading was just not gonna cut it yeah. because A, you don't wanna use up your batteries again. Your eyes. And it is really, you know, <laughs> sitting by mm. candlelight reading, it might sound romantic, <laughs> but honestly, by the time you get to the end of the page, you're kind of like, what? Yeah. So um, it just wasn't practical. So you can get the reading headlights and things, um, but if you don't have that, I would just say having a pack of cards it keeps you both engaged. Mm. And then if you have more than one, if you've got a family of oh, kids definitely. and stuff, yeah, so many people can do it. Um, and you can sit around together. They're easy to see. The numbers are clear. And I think also with like things like Monopoly and board games, you can lose the, the tiny mm. little pieces of uh, oh, nightmare. Yeah. So not losing the pieces in the dark and just having a pack of cards, really simple and it always works. Mm -hmm. Then the one really crucial piece of equipment that you need when it gets really dark is torches. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that now we've got quite a few of. Uh, we've got a really powerful torch from Maglites, which basically allows us to cast a lot of light out. But it's a big unit, it's a big torch, which takes a lot of space up. And we've actually done a review on that. So if we you have. want to check out the review, have, yeah. we'll link that up above. And we didn't have that torch when we had the power no, outage. No, um, Which is what was the first Prompt thing. Prompt us we, to get it. <laughs> thing we, so we had the typical kind of huge, bulky, you know, 20 year old um, torch. And in the middle of this, you know, power outage, we went to turn it on. It was like the, the faintest flicker of yeah. light came from this thing. It was completely dead, it was useless. So yeah, we were just like, okay, we need to get a decent so, torch. So this mag light did a big difference because it does it casts so much light. Yeah. But it is potentially a little bit overkilly for, for certain situations like that. So we have got a smaller mag light, which you can basically keep in your bedside table. Yeah. So you can quickly reach and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It won't fill the whole space up. You reach for it, turn it on, and you can basically see where you are and you know you can actually see what you're doing. So just like our big mag light, it works in exactly the same way. It's got three clicks. One click for full, two clicks for less light, three clicks for even less light than that. Uh, it's really convenient because it is really small. It casts 200 lumens of light, which is a lot. Mm. Uh, and certainly enough for just, you know, getting around the house, going down the stairs, seeing what you're doing when it's completely pitch black and it's so small, it's just really handy. Yeah, it's like a pocket torch, isn't yeah. it? I think the one thing that I wouldn't skimp on ever again is a torch. Definitely. I think that I've been very guilty of always kind of just buying the cheapest kind of, you know, going to the hardware store, whatever is at the counter, just cheap, cheerful torches. Mm. They never work. They never actually give you any light, the amount of light that you that need. You need. Um, they're absolutely useless in so many instances and they just die so quickly and they break so easily. Yeah. Um, so I think that having a really good solid torch is seriously worth the investment. It's nice about Maglite, it's just that it could buy once brand. So yeah. once you've bought it, you just don't need to, to really buy it again. You're gonna have it for decades and it's always gonna work, mm -hmm. which is just great. Yeah. So another thing that is a little bit more obscure, but something that I would really recommend is also using your LED candles if you have any. Um, or if not, maybe considering it actually just getting mm. some. Um, they're really nice as like home decor things. They're really nice and safe because you don't have the fire flame hazard. 
But what was really, I was just so surprised at how useful they were during the power outage. It was the one thing that I knew was already charged mm. because they had batteries in it. But the ones that I was using just had a double A battery in them. So I knew that the batteries were good to go. Um, we actually had them out in December because it was coming up to Christmas. So I actually had these out as Christmas decorations. Um, and I don't think I would have thought of them if, if they hadn't have been out mm, for the true. Christmas. I wouldn't have probably actually thought of them to, you know, in the middle of a power mm. outage. Oh, let me get the LED candles out. I wouldn't have maybe thought that through. But um, because they were out for our Christmas, um, I actually did think, oh, hold on a minute. I'm going to take these away from the Christmas decorations and actually put them into more sensible mm -hmm. kind of strategic places that we need, where in doorways, um, on the kitchen counter, that kind of thing, so that we can actually kind of live by the candlelight in the evening, especially if you're, for example, pl just playing a game of cards and you don't need mm -hmm. a huge Good amount of life. light. Um, these were really very convenient and the one you can get these on Amazon so many different brands um, That do them But the one thing I would say is the one that we've got actually comes with a remote control and that remote control was really convenient mm. Because if you have quite a number of these around the downstairs area you to be able to just walk into that room And just hit the remote control and all those candles come on um, to give your bearings in that room I think is really convenient and again just to be able to pick them up and move them You've yeah. got pets or, or kids or toddlers or anything like that to know that these are safe around those um, in those situations is really good and reassuring I was surprised at how useful these were so I would definitely recommend these and you don't have to worry about hot wax if you accidentally actually knock the candle because it's dark uh, and the one yeah. thing that surprised me the most is that when they're on normally and you've got the overhead lights on uh, you don't really notice them too much but when the electricity went out and you turn those on they don't flood the room with lights but they will certainly cast enough ambient lights for you to know where you are get your bearings and not actually walk into stuff so next up we've got a sweatband in case you want to go and play some tennis squash no it's not ready but this, this is a headlamp from biolite uh, in all seriousness the headlamp 750 is actually quite a convenient uh, torch uh, purely because if you have to go outside uh, let's say you need to get firewood or something where you need both hands to be able to do stuff you don't want to have a torch uh, and actually have to you know fiddle with that you can actually have the lights just facing whichever way you're looking uh, what's really handy about this one is that it's got the red light uh, it, it can go with the white light too which is blinding I'm not going to do that right now uh, and it's also got a little adjustable little head bit here so you can actually point it up or down which is very very handy so you've got the torch on the front and when you actually take it off you've got the battery pack at the back uh, so this is basically where you will be charging it up. It charges via USB, which again is very handy and will actually be able to utilize uh, the previous power bank that we showed you if you need to do that. And it's also got a light on the back as mm -hmm. well as the front. So you've got your torch light on the front and then you've got another light on the back, um, which can, for example, it could strobe red. It can just have red there and white here. So if Mars goes out, um, you know, if he walks off into the field or into the woods or whatever That's true. we can actually see where mars is walking because mm -hmm. well, obviously once he's walking away from us um it's very nice to know that there's a safety um aspect here mm -hmm. uh, and apart from actually use, utilizing this during a power failure i think it'll actually be quite a handy thing to have in the car if you're driving because if you break down you can yes. put it on and you'll actually be visible on the side of the road uh, and I also think that'll yeah. be quite convenient if you're maybe a runner or a jogger and you want to go running in the early hours or at twilight. Again, you'll be quite visible from all sides. This is made by Biolite, which is the same company and brand that made the Camp Stove Complete Cook Kit. <laughs> and I have to say they come across as a really nice ethical company. All of their um, packaging says that they're a climate neutral company and they seem to do a lot of work in Africa. Um, so in each of these um, products there's actually a picture of this one's for example taken in Kenya um, and they says that when you purchase a BioLite product you support our work delivering renewable energy solutions to households living beyond the grid. The other one with the complete uh, cook kit it looks like they have either donated cook kits um, into um, Kamp Kampala in Uganda. In Uganda. Um, so it's just really nice to know that they're mm. a, a really innovative company and they're also a company that looks like they're doing a lot of good. So really recommend just checking out all the BioLite products. In fact, I might go onto the website today and see what else they've got. Cause and I will actually add to that is the products are all fantastically well made. They're yeah. very, very good quality. They're not going to be breaking. Again, they kind of buy once and have for a long time kind of products. Yes. Uh, so, you know, again, as you said, I think they're definitely worth checking out. Yeah. So we've spoken a lot about battery operated products. We definitely recommend keeping a store of batteries somewhere in the house. So yeah. we've, we've got a stack of AA, AAAs and D batteries, which are basically the ones that we have for the bulk of the things that we've got in the house. I think the worst thing is having a fantastic torch or product that you actually do need. 
and then the batteries have run out and you don't have them and you're not going to be able to order them or anything like that. So we always now make sure that we're going to keep quite a good uh, stock level of batteries. I know it's a really basic thing and I'm sure that everybody's kind of kind of thinking, well, yeah, you know, obviously, but it, it is one of those things that you kind of just let slip. And, you know, for us, you know, we've kind of, you just kind of think, well, I'll order them when I need them. Um, and then mm. typically, you know, for example, the remote control runs out on the TV and it's driving you crazy yeah. because then you can't turn, you know, things on for ages. Um, so I actually think that it is really important that in our plastic box with all of these really cool bits of kit that we're going to rely on in an emergency mm. that we also have a really solid amount of batteries that are brand new sure. that we check on regularly or re recycle kind of use them mm. and then replace them um, that they're always there and we've got a really good healthy quantity of matches and batteries those kind of things you just you can't go wrong with you really need them so i hope that's given you some ideas and inspiration and tips for things that you might want to think about um, it's certainly a good starting point mm -hmm. for us given that just a month ago we were totally unprepared okay. and really got caught with our pants down so at least now i know that we will have a box of things to go to that we can rely on to get us through we're definitely going to continue to add to this mm -hmm. as and when we need it for sure we're going to get the panel the solar panel that uh, goes the to power the bank, power bank. Um, and i i think out of everything everything looks really i'm really pleased with the quality of everything mm -hmm. i think that just from first glances without using anything i think the mag light is definitely a brand i would highly recommend Brilliant. and BioLite is another that brand. That camps though, I just absolutely love the concept <laughs> so of it, it's so awesome. <laughs> you want a power outage just <laughs> so you can use it. Um, so yes, I'm really, I feel so much more confident and prepared and I think when you feel prepared, you feel a lot more confident yeah. and secure. And for me, my anxiety levels go down an awful lot. So it's it's just really good. I'm really pleased and we've if, done if it. And if you guys have got any products that you know you'd recommend, please yeah. you know pop them down in the comments below because we'd definitely like to to hear those and maybe add those to our our collection of products. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, we're not going to be looking at um, installing a power generator or not anything yet. like that. That's a little <laughs> bit beyond the scope of what we need. Yeah. But you know, each of us live different lifestyles in different locations mm -hmm. with different requirements. So, you know, you might be, for example, in a flat and all you've taken away from this video is maybe the cards, LED candles or and a torch, a torch yeah. you know. Um, but then there's other people that might need all of this and a lot more. Mm -hmm. So we all need different things. So just drop your ideas below. We love hearing from you guys. And if you do get any of these things and you're using them for a first time, yeah, let, let us know what your um, first impressions and your experience was with them as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And we hope to see you on our next video. Take care. Bye bye.